Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode. Um, so I think I've been doing quite a lot of the old Quantel stuff recently. So I thought it's about time to uh, put that to one side and actually do a bit of a tech, vintage tech tear now. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's get right in and started. Uh, we have this box here. Um, this cost me a tenner and this is uh, manufactured by Polaroid and it is called a freeze frame video recorder. And very handily, it comes with the instruction manual uh, stuck to the top of it, so we can easily figure out what this is. Uh, basically, you feed a video input into it, um, a PAL uh, composite video, or RGB for that matter, um, and you can then print out the image onto film. Now, this being Polaroid, it uh, does come, or it would have come with a Polaroid instant film cartridge to allow you to print onto Polaroid film, but this particular model has a 35mm film camera attached to it. So this would take PAL video images and then um, turn them into 35mm uh, film. So let's have a quick th flick through the manual and see what, if there's any dates in here. Um, there's normally some kind of copyright date in the front, but doesn't appear to be. Oh, hang on. Uh, single star Polaroid type film through, available in 1988. Anything on the back? Um, you might not be able to see that, but there is a date code on there is 688. So this is um, late 1980s tech. Let's just turn the brightness down there for you so you should be able to see some of what's in here. So it's got illustrations of the actual main unit which I have here. There is also a control unit which I don't have. Um, this obviously got separated along the way but um, no matter, it's not like I'm going to use this or anything. Um, so uh, this looks like pretty basic instructions how to connect it up to your video source and all that sort of stuff. Um, there is a picture of the Polaroid instant film camera which attaches on the front. Um, from the looks of it you can adjust various things with the control panel, brightness, um, saturation and all that sort of stuff, contrast, that kind of thing shows you how to use it. It looks pretty simple, it basically stick a video signal into it and then hit the print button. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there's not much of the way instructions caring and cleaning. Um, and that's it. So that's just 14 pages for the English and then it goes on to the other languages. And just reading down here, there is a user test mode which you use to be able to clean clean it. Um, it says to test the recorder, remove the camera back and remove the cable from the camera jack on the front panel. With the power on, press the print switch on the control unit and observe the filter wheel through the camera back opening. It should move to the red filter with the red image information displayed on the CRT behind it. So uh, that's a really interesting uh, bit of info because this does actually have uh, color filtering in it. So um, it's mentioned CRT, so this is gonna be, inside this there's gonna be a black and white CRT with a color wheel in front of it to allow you to take color photos. Um, that's quite interesting so yeah it'll certainly be interesting to see how that's actually arranged inside um, now obviously with something like this um, there is going to be you know, all the analog video inputs uh, all the circuitry related to that but there is going to have to be uh, some kind of uh, video frame storage uh, to be able to catch a still frame and then expose it onto the film uh, because I'm sure I just read somewhere the exposure times, yes, exposure times um, onto 35mm ISO 100 film uh, we have 12 seconds exposure so you would have to have some kind of digital uh, frame storage to be able to store the image while you're doing the exposure. So it'll be interesting to see how that is also done, um, whether there's a it's all done in discrete logic or whether there is a small microcontroller in there or a small uh, microprocessor maybe um, running the show. Right, uh, let's put that to one side and open it up. 
actually before we open up let's give you a tour around the outside um, so it probably must weigh what three four kilos something like that um, on the front we have a um, power switch the camera body on the front there let's just see if we can get that a bit better in shot unfortunately it's all black so it's a little bit hard to film um, so we've got the camera body on the front there attached with two big thumb screws we shall take that off in just a moment. Um, the rest of it is just a black case. And then on the back, we have all the inputs. Um, nice big heat sink there, presumably for the power supply. Uh, we've got a number of different inputs, options, setting. Uh, we've got PAL or RGB mode, TTL or analog, 75 ohm termination, and sync on green or external sync. We've got the actual video inputs, pass-through outputs, um, the control panel connector, AC input and a couple of fuses and a remote. Um, I'm not sure whether that's the control panel or whether it's something else. So let's take off uh, this 35mm camera body. Uh, there's just two thumb screws on here. And the whole system just comes straight off. That's pretty easy. So, there's no indication on who makes this. I'm guessing it's going to be Polaroid themselves. And yeah, inside there we have a regular 35mm film transport. Looks pretty ordinary rewind rewind button there so presumably um, well obviously this is going to be a motorized um, uh, body uh, so with an automatic shutter and all that so it can be completely controlled by the uh, the main unit um, quick look at the ID sticker underneath um, if that's the serial number then that's not <laughs> that's not many at all um we have model pal ff vr2 freeze frame video recorder looks like it's been passed through a polaroid in germany blah 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 made in japan yeah not much to see okay let's get the screwdrivers out actually just gonna start unscrewing this and i've just noticed a Pat test sticker, um, date tested 614, so that's not that long ago really. Um, and we have University of Manchester, so obviously that's where this has come from. Right, uh, let's have a quick look around this. Uh, we have, the, let's start at the rear panel. Uh, we have a number of circuit boards on the back holding all the input um, connectors. And there's a few components and stuff on those. Um, there's also a switch just on there for something. Uh, looks like there's a couple of adjustment knobs on that board as well. So uh, we have a number of power devices on the back here on this heat sink just down in there presumably for the power supply uh, which is this board here so we've got two separate boards um, yeah this is this is the power supply board and that, uh, that's the footprint for a flyback, so I'm guessing that is going to be the controller for the CRT. There's a transformer just in down in there. On this side, we have a large PCB, which all looks to be analog. 
video stuff. Uh, we've got a couple of delay lines. Take it, that's a delay line. Bright CRT video, auto bright switch, lots of Sony branded, well, a couple of Sony branded devices, monitor. So, yeah, that looks like it's the processing of all the analog sing signals from the back panel. And we also have this silver can in the middle. A load of wires going in the back of it. I take it that is where the the small little frame store is going to be to actually digitise and store the image. Uh, and of course we have the actual CRT just in there. So we just got uh, the usual four wires going to the yoke and some wires going over to the the rear and the high voltage connection in the back there. Little cardboard cover going around this, this the, the back of the CRT, presumed to stop light getting in through the back. Um, presumably, this filter wheel that we should be seeing is going to be under there somewhere. Well, let's see about taking some of this stuff out. There we go. So, it looks, looks like the um, analog sort of front end card it actually has Toshiba written on it there so presumably made by Toshiba Right, well, looking at this, um, it looks like the CRT is actually clamped in with this this bar over the top here. So uh, rather than chopping these wires, which um, aren't on plugs, I think I'll just take the CRT out now because that will also save me disconnecting the, the anode as well. So let's take that clamp off. Check that out, what a lovely little CRT that is. So there we have the CRT controller board and the power supply. Um, also worth noting that we have more um, Toshiba branding there on the CRT and on this power supply board as well so so I think it's probably worth assuming that this was manufactured by Toshiba for Polaroid so uh, having a quick look at the rear panel you can see there, there's a couple of uh, PCBs with all the connectors and everything stuck on them um, there's a few components and adjustment knobs and stuff on them um, I'm actually surprised about that I expected it to be all on the um, sort of main circuit board, but hey ho, what difference does it make? Uh, loads of wires, blah blah blah. Um, that's all running into this this box here. So let's just take this out, um, and then we can take the front cover off the front and have a look at that colour wheel. So hopefully you can see down in to where the aperture of where the CRT was. Um, looks like we've got a light sensor, some kind of sensor down in there. Got a motor or something just just up in there. That's what these wires are attached to, and that's really all I can see at the moment. So I think we need to take this uh, front panel off. So 
So there's the front panel. Big um, lump of cast aluminium there. So we have a uh, main switch on the front. There is a power LED. Actually, it's a dual one, red and green. So I presume that's like uh, it might indicate when it's taking the picture or something. Um, and we have the connector for the camera. So that just goes out to a... Uh, how many pins is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an eight pin DIN connector. And here now we can see that colour wheel. Um, so, a oh, very, very simple mechanism. There is a motor on a little spring loaded thing with a rubber wheel, and that just runs this wheel round. So, so of course, if you were taking colour photos, then what the um, digital frame store would do is filter out just the green and then uh, move this green filter in front of the CRT and then expose the film. Then it would do the same with the blue, expose the film and the same with the red to generate a um, full colour image. Obviously if you're just taking black and white I presume that's what the, the no filter option is for. Um, so we've just got a little guide wheel and there is an optical sensor just there and on the edge of the wheel there's a number of notches so presumably you can just count and find out exactly where it is. Yeah so we've just got a couple of index marks, um, we've got a double index um, and you can see that uh, that notch is actually wider than that one so that'll be the sort of an index mark and then you have markers for the the actual filters one two three four and five so it can just count round the number of rotations with this little uh, right uh, time for a little quick tidy up and then we'll have a look at the digital board well, I was just having a clear up and I just noticed in the back of here in the instruction manual I've just found somebody's contact print. Um, contact print is where you have 35mm film it's been exposed and you literally just lay it on a sheet of photographic paper and then just expose it. So um, you can see here we've got somebody's contact print. So we've got uh, what looks like some kind of cartoon drawing, something from a book, not quite sure what that is. Some pictures that looks like the turn the brightness down a little bit so you'll be able to see it. There you go. That looks like the old Liberal Democrats logo. Uh, barcode. Some kind of jewellery or something, maybe. A ruler. Some print. Something engraved in metal and something else. There's no date on it on the back. So uh, obviously somebody's bit of work from the University of Manchester. Okay let's have a look at the box of digital electronics. These easily removed covers. Right, so we've got a little bit of stuff going on in here. We have, um, these were all the connections from the rear panels um, on the end here. And these connections went out to the motor, that sensor, um, the power on off LED. Um, so we've got a couple of adjustments up at the top there. These are accessible from, from the top. Uh, we have what looks is probably going to be some kind of uh, small micro and an EEPROM. Um, again, lots and lots of stuff that's Toshiba. So yeah, I think this is quite clearly a Toshiba product. More Toshiba branding there. It's got Toshiba processors. The EEPROM is even Toshiba. So let's just turn this over because all the, the silk screen is this way up. 
Um, let's see if there's anything readable on here that can give us a clue. No, there's not a huge amount there. Uh, we shall pull this EEPROM out, see if there's anything on there, but quite clearly this is using a little microprocessor um, just to handle all the, uh, all the stuff. You know, operate the frame store, which clearly isn't on this board because we need a little bit of memory for that, and there's not any memory on this board, so presumably it's, it's all in here. Then we got, uh, oh, some of these connectors are actually labelled, which is nice. So we have ground 5 volts, ground and 12 volts, video in and ground, video out and ground just there. Uh, we have wires that are labelled ME black. BLK, PAL RGB print, ME, oh, memory, uh, memory black, blank, um, memory RE and RW, read and write, presumably. So, uh, yeah, again, more Toshiba stuff. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, ICs there. We'll look up the IC numbers in just a moment. So, presumably, these are going to be doing most of the work. Uh, the date codes on these are 1988, so that uh, marries quite nicely with what was in the user manual. And we've got probably a little bit of DRAM just there, just to hold and store the actual image. Okay, I think what we've got on these two boards is, this one is uh, operated by a little microcontroller, mi oh, I should say a microprocessor. Let's have a look what it actually is. Okay, so as suspected, this is a Toshiba TMP ATC40, and it's an 8-bit microcontroller, has maximum of 4K of ROM, and 256 bytes of RAM. Additional functions, 8-bit interval timer and counter. Um, software and pin compatible with Intel, Intel's 8048 series, series um, 96 instructions, and runs at 11 megahertz. So this particular one is the 40AP. So. <clears throat> It has 4K of internal ROM and up to 4K of external ROM, so presumably that's on there, and 256 bytes of RAM, yeah. Um, 27 I.O. ports, blah, 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 etc., etc. Uh, so this is quite clearly doing all this sort of user interfacey stuff, the motor controls and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's actually sort of running the show, if you like, and... And then this board here is actually doing the video processing. Um, there's only a few wires coming in and out of this, so it um, might be an interesting project to try and resurrect that and actually see if we can actually make it do anything. Um, we've just got power input just here, a video input and a video output, and uh, presumably the control wires. Um, so possibly this... Uh, you might be able to turn this into a little PAL frame store. I'm not sure what resolution it runs at. Okay, let's have a quick look at the uh, sort of business end of this video capture board. Uh, we have here a Fujitsu MB40578, and that is a um, video ADC. Uh, so that is obviously capturing the video signal and then processing it through these two, which look very suspiciously like custom parts. Let's see if we can get anything on those. And no, I can't find anything on those. Um, presumably it's just a custom ASIC to clock the data from the um, the ADC into the RAM, because you can see all the traces here running out to uh, these little RAM zip packages, uh, which are... And these are NEC um, D 
4464V-12 and they are 64K by 4-bit dynamic RAMs, um, obviously at 120 nanosecond. So with the seven ICs we have here, that gives us a total of around about 229 kilobytes. Um, just going back to these ICs here, um, another thing um, is that these are actually DRAMs, so these will need actually refreshing. So I suspect what they've got here is a custom IC which does the loading of the data in and out and also does the refreshing of the DRAMs um, to keep them alive. Uh, so obviously a little custom part that they've made there. Uh, look at the bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess, uh, <laughs> I think somebody's made a mistake somewhere along the way, haven't they? Uh, they've got capacitors all over the place. Um, yeah, bodgetastic. Yeah, somebody's goofed somewhere, haven't they, on that one. So let's take a, a quick look at this CRT. Uh, so it's a little 4x3 um, CRT made by Toshiba and has a, what's that, a th three inch display. Tube is E2787 PDW. Uh, doesn't seem to be any date code on it, but I would imagine it probably dates from the same time as the rest of the system, so about 1988. Um, so these boards tend to be pretty generic, um, literally you'll just be able to put a composite video signal into these and you will get a picture um, on there. Um, there's various controls for gain, height, linearity, vertical hold, all that sort of stuff. So uh, they, they, they can make quite fun little project things to, to work with. Um, obviously you can generate a, a, a composite video signal with uh, even a basic uh, microcontroller so uh, these can be fun little things to play around with as long as you don't stick your finger in in there so I, I'm saving this because it's off to a friend of mine who uh, needs a little CRT to uh, play around with so that's going to be put to one side right I just pulled out the EEPROM and had a quick read of that there's nothing really in it there's nothing English readable in it certainly so there's probably no on-screen menus or anything. It just seems to be all code. So not really much to see in there. And I think that is pretty much it. So um, thank you for watching. If you want to see more, then hit the subscribe button, comments in the comment section, all that sort of stuff. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll uh, see you on the next one. Bye for now.